Hello, Mr. Andy here. Uh, we're going to wrap up the assembly here for this part uh, with an assembly drawing like you see on your screen right now. This is a PDF file, but it's a copy of that drawing. You'll notice that we have uh, three views of the assembly at a scale of one to two. And then we have a trimetric view over here of the assembly that's uh, shrunk down even smaller than that. And finally, we have a bill of materials on this drawing. Um, so I'd like to show you how to bring all of those components into a drawing file. This is a B size sheet. Um, so let's get this out of the way. And here we are where we left off with our assembly. And I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to collapse this assembly. Typically in SolidWorks, when you insert an assembly in uh, to get a drawing view, it comes in in whatever state you saved in. Um, and we're going to deal mostly with uh, the 2D views that where it's collapsed. One other thing to note, again, I have a mate in place here that locked this down so it won't spin. Um, again, we can suppress that mate. So if you were going to show this to a client, for instance, this very last mate here, this parallel mate that we did, if I suppress that, it would allow me to spin this and show a client or whatever that the part will spin. But once again, for the 2D drawing, we really want that to be lined up. So I'm going to unsuppress that mate so that this is locked in its exact orientation that we want in the 2D drawing. All right, I'm going to save this file. And now I'm going to make a drawing from the assembly. This is an inch drawing. And we're going to choose a B size sheet and hit OK. Now I'm going to bring a front view in. And it looks like SolidWorks has chosen 1 to 2 for a scale, so that's kind of nice. I'll put in a top view and a right side view. And we'll hit Escape. Now, in these assembly views, we probably don't need to see all those hidden lines, so let's turn hidden lines off in our parent view. And you'll notice that turned them off everywhere. We also need to get tangent edges turned on. That might help the look a little bit. So we're going to go tangent edge with font. And we'll probably have to do that in every viewport. So tangent edge with font. And tangent edge with font. I am not going to take the time to center mark these. So take a look at your handout uh, in terms of what center marks are shown. Um, and make sure you get those in. I now would like to bring in that trimetric view that we're going to explode. So let's insert a model view of 55. So we'll hit Next. And I'm going to bring in a trimetric view. And that's already checked. So I can just uh, come on screen and drop that in. Um, and we'll hit OK. Now this view, um, you can see, is collapsed which is not the look that we want. So we're going to right click in the viewport. Again, get into that gold colored box and right click. And we're going to go to properties. And here's a checkbox right here to show in the exploded state. And we'll hit OK. And it's going to blow that apart. Now notice that, uh, remember we've got to get a bill of materials in here. We certainly don't have room for that. So we're going to have to change the scale of this view. So let's scroll down while that viewport is lit. And let's go to a custom scale. And we might try something like 1 to 4 is going to be too tiny. So we're going to pick an unusual scale, if you will. And we'll go user defined. And let's try 1 to 3. And that's probably going to be good enough. That will give us plenty of room down here for our bill of materials. Check your handout. There should be a scale specified on the handout for you. All right, so I'm going to turn off hidden lines in this view, first of all. And then, as you can see, we're not seeing all the edges there, so we need to get tangent edges turned on. So we'll right click, tangent edges with font. We do that oftentimes when we have cast parts so we can see those boundaries. All right, so we have our exploded trimetric view there. Looks lovely. Remember, we've got that white space in there now that we didn't have in the, in the other picture that I showed you. Now we need to get some balloon leaders on here. So we're going to go to Annotation and Balloon. 
And I want you to be very careful when you're putting balloon leaders in. So I'm going to zoom up quite close on this part. And I want you to make sure when you attach a balloon leader that you're attaching to an outside edge of the part. So I don't ever want to see a balloon arrowhead to an interior line. That's incorrect. Um, if you have to attach to a part on an interior surface, you would do that on a surface that doesn't produce an arrowhead. <coughs> Excuse me. And see a dot. But there's no reason to do that on this part. So we're going to do a balloon leader to an outside surface. Let's zoom back out a little bit and do that. Uh, we don't need balloons for every nut. They're all the same. I'll take an outside edge here and place. I'll take an outside edge here and place. And I'm, by eye, I'm trying to keep these at about the same angle. Makes it much easier to read our drawing. Uh, I'm going to come in here somewhere and I'm probably going to take this one at an opposite angle. Kind of cross through that line there. And then we'll drop this one down at that same angle. And finally, again, we'll take the edge of the bolt, if SOLIDWORKS would find it for me, and about the same angle, and drop that one. Now you'll notice as I put balloon leaders in that I did not enter numbers. The numbers automatically came in. So you might ask, how does SOLIDWORKS uh, place those numbers? Well, it's the order in which you brought the parts into your assembly model, the 3D model of the assembly. So the sheave was the first part in, that was the base piece. And then I brought in the shim next, and then the upper strap, and then the lower strap, and then the bolt, and then the nuts. So that's how the numbering is arranged. So uh, think about that when you're building your assembly, that things come in and they, and they get bill of material in that order. You can edit that, but it's more work. So it's better to just think about that ahead of time as you insert parts into your assembly. All right, now, uh, these are not lined up real nice, so we do need to deal with that. So I'm just going to grab all of those with a crossing box, and then we're going to go to in, uh, Tools, Align, and Vertical. And right now, while they're all lit, I can grab one of them, and I can move all of them together. So we'll get those placed where we'd like them, and we'll just click out in space. Okay? Now those are on a nice vertical alignment, which I'll expect to see in your drawings. All right, now we need a bill of materials. Okay. Um, so we're going to go Insert, Table, Bill of Materials. I'll leave my mouse there for just a second. And we're going to click on that. And it asks me to select a drawing view to specify the model for the bill of materials. Well, the, the components in, the, in, in this front side view and the components in this exploded view are the same exact components. Sometimes we show different configurations maybe in an exploded view. So it really doesn't matter for this assignment which view you click in. So I'll just click in the exploded view here. You do want to make sure you have the right template. Read your handout. We do want the description template for this one. So I'm going to accept that and I'm just going to click OK. We won't mess with any other settings and it's going to put my bill of materials in. Um, now, a comment about the bill of materials. Um, these values that you see here are the description values that you did in each model. So if these are blank, or if your materials are blank, you need to open up the sheave model and edit the file properties to put the description and material in. Open up the shim model, put in the description and material. Okay, so those go in in each individual part file under File Properties, just like when we were doing title blocks for drawings. The nut and bolt, which I supply to you, should already have these values in place. So that's your bill of materials, and and I don't want you to edit anything in this table. So if you've got an error in the table, you need to go back to the original part file and fix it. Don't just double click and try to edit stuff in here. Then it's no longer associative. If I make a change to the part file, the material changes on the part, it will not show up in the, in the assembly. Finally, notice that my title block's not filled out. 
Um, so uh, I need to go back to the model to fill that out. So let's uh, right click over here and let's open up the model, the assembly model. And I'm going to go to File, Properties. And uh, for Drawn By, I'll put in my initials. And you'll put your login ID in here. I'll just put one, two, three, four, five. And for a description, uh, this is an assembly dash, and then whatever the name of the assembly is. I think this is the yoke assembly, if I remember correctly. Material would be there is no material, it's an assembly. So we go N slash A. And then you'll notice for tolerances, there are no dimensions on this part that we would use as uh, you know, measurements. Um, we can put reference dimensions in. So we've, I've just NA'd out all of the tolerances in the title block. I'll hit OK. I'll save this. And then I'll just close it. And when I return back to the drawing, now my title block is all filled out. So again, this data is pulled from the assembly 3D part file. And this data is pulled from the individual part files when you modeled each part. Okay, so there you have it. Let's zoom back out and take a look at this thing. You would, of course, again, get all your center marks in to make these three views look appropriate. If there are any overall dimensions needed, you'll add them manually right here. Leave the parentheses turned on because they'd be reference dimensions. And then you can wrap up, finally, the yoke assembly uh, and print this and hand it in. Good luck and enjoy.